<laughs> well, Donald Trump uh, getting some pushback from some evangelicals saying that the GOP is not. Uh, well, well, he said the GOP was not the party of conservatives. Uh, I want to bring back Trump spokesperson Katrina Pearson. Uh, Katrina, Donald Trump and Russell Moore are going at it pretty hard. Uh, Donald Trump in one of his tweets saying, Russell Moore, truly a terrible representative of evangelicals, going on to say, a nasty guy with no heart. Nevertheless, there's a coalition of about 60 Christian leaders who are asking, who are asking people of faith to reject Donald, Donald Trump. And they actually say it's because of vulgar racial and religious demagoguery. What's going on here? <laughs> Uh, well, you'd actually have to ask them because the conservatives and evangelicals that I know, like Phyllis Schlafly, uh, Sarah Palin, Jerry Falwell Jr., Pastor Robert Jeffress, um, really make an astounding case on why evangelicals should support Trump. Because at the end of the day, when we look across the world, we're really not looking for a Sunday school teacher. We are looking for a commander, someone that is going to put the needs of American families and their children first, someone who is not hostile uh, to Christians in this country. And there's a clear option for that. Yeah, uh, yeah you know, listen, he, Donald Trump won the overwhelming majority of evangelicals in those southern states and other states as well. Uh, so there's no doubt about that. He was able to capture a large lion's share of that vote. And still, there are very prominent leaders within that movement who, who still are resisting him. That, again, we go back to this olive branch thing. But, but, but what, do you think it, what do you think it's all about? I saw a tweet today that said Russell Moore is one of these advocates for, for racial uh, you know, unity, adoption, and things like that. And, and by inference, saying that Donald Trump perhaps is against those things. Well, and I think that's a part of it, too. There's this miscommunication about, you know, first, who Mr. Trump is and what he stands for. Um, we have seen time and time again him being painted as a racist and a bigot. And, you know, and, and that's astounding as well. I mean, Mr. Trump was, you know, one of the first to bring women in as executives into corporate America. There's now a video out there of Mr. Trump speaking at a Rainbow Coalition meeting back in the 90s for bringing minorities and African Americans into corporate America. So there's this caricature out there that I think a lot of people have bought into, uh, which I think over time will dissolve as we get out there in contrast with Hillary Clinton. Because anyone who knows Donald Trump knows he's not a racist or a bigot. Well, I know there's a great video by one of the uh, black female executive that is uh, that one of his companies that has been making rounds Lynn all Patton. weekend. V yeah, very touching, very touching. And yet, uh, by the same token, Donald Trump uh, going after Hillary Clinton and Bill Clinton on some of his escapades, if you will, for lack of a better word. Is, is that a dangerous road for him to go down when some of these evangelicals, they want to vote for him, but they feel uneasy if some of his past comes to light with respect to the divorces and some of the affairs? Well, I think, you know, the truth is uncomfortable for a lot of people, but some of this stuff is relevant, particularly when Hillary Clinton is trying to paint Mr. Trump as somewhat of a sexist and misogynist. Um, and he points out that hypocrisy, not just because of what Bill Clinton did, but Hillary Clinton's role in the aftermath, which I think is very important, considering how there is a generation of women who have no idea the torment that these women were put through and intimidation as well. So I do think that that's important. I also think that when it comes to the evangelicals, it is, it is, it's upsetting to see that a lot of them, that they don't really look at the bigger picture. They're just focused on, like I said, looking for a Sunday school teacher, someone like a Jimmy Carter, for that matter. And that didn't work. But what we do have is an opportunity to elect someone that is not going to put people in their own little boxes. Mr. Trump doesn't care what race you are or what gender you are. He treats everyone the same. And I think that's what's going to fold, unfold after the next couple of months. So when Russell Moore says uh, people should can really think about whether it's important to win or important to vote their conscience, uh, uh, essentially saying, listen, uh, winning and losing is one thing, but going against your core beliefs is another. What do you say to that? Well, I think your core beliefs are one thing, but I think if you look at the world around you, it's another. Because if you have a core belief of preserving Christianity and protecting Christians abroad, if you have a core belief of, of bringing back uh, money to this country because of jobs in the economy, we are going into $20 trillion of debt. If those are your core beliefs and you want religious freedom, then why on earth would you sit out in an election that could determine every last one of those issues in one vote in November? Right. And I think right now people are a little bit emotional. Some of their candidates did not win. The primary was pretty intense for a lot of people. But I think all of that will pass because when you do see the contrast, I don't see how uh, and myself as a God-fearing person who could sit home and allow Hillary right. Clinton to take office. Well, of course, uh, I'm sure there are a whole lot of uh, biblical verses we could say right now that would make the e this even easier. And let's not forget those three Absolutely. potential three Supreme Court uh, nominees. Katrina, thanks very much. Really appreciate it.